There were many codices in existence at the time of the Spanish conquest of Yucatan in the 16th century, but they were destroyed in bulk by the conquistadors and Catholic priests soon after. Why did the Spanish conquistadors and the Catholic priests try to hide a civilization? 459 years ago, Fray Diego de Landa Calderón, a 38-year-old Franciscan priest, destroyed several Maya codices that contained the whole history and beliefs of the Maya culture in Marida, Yucatan. He landed in Yucatan territory where the Catholic Church and the Spanish crown had entrusted him with converting the native Mayas who were being conquered to Catholicism. On July 12, 1562, the Franciscan friar started a massive fire in the municipality of Mani as in part of an inquisitorial procedure that developed in the Maya region. There, he torched holy items as well as 27 codices that contained the entirety of Mayan life, history, and worldview. Why were the Catholic priests and conquistadors sent to convert the conquered region? What did the Catholic priests seek to achieve? Let's dive right in. Maya Codices First of all, what are Maya codices? Maya codices are folding books stemming from the pre-Columbian Maya civilization. On Mesoamerican paper manufactured from the inner bark of some trees, primarily the wild fig tree, or amate, these codices were inscribed in Mayan hieroglyphic characters, ficus glabrata. The Maya's hoon gave the paper its name, the Nahuatl word amatl. The folding books are creations of skilled scribes who work for the howler monkey gods. Hoon paper was created by the Maya in about the 5th century, around the same time as the Romans. But their bark paper was more robust and provided a better writing surface than papyrus. The names of the codices are those of the cities where they eventually made their homes. Of the handful that have survived, the Dresden Codex is wisely regarded as the most significant. In the mid-16th century, Franciscan missionaries burned nearly all of the Maya's written records to eradicate their religion. Only three or four Maya codices exist today. The names of three of them, Dresden, Paris, and Madrid, reflect the European cities in which they are housed. A fourth volume, the Grolier Codex, which is currently located in Mexico City, is still debatable as to its veracity. The codices were most likely written no earlier than the 12th century AD. However, it is possible that the Maya copied works from far earlier. The codices were used to determine dates for rituals, frequently by connecting them to astronomical phenomena. The codices pages typically feature an image of a god, along with a string of glyphs that describe what the deity is doing. These books also include lists of numbers on numerous pages that the Maya used to forecast solar and lunar eclipses, the phases of the moon, and the motions of Mars and Venus. A three-page section of the Dresden Codex that lists the phases of Venus, as well as a list of Zulkin dates and glyphs associated with omens and augury is one example. Venus was thought by the Maya to be connected to violence and misfortune at specific periods of the year. Make sure to subscribe to History Flicks and hit the bell icon so you won't miss any of my future history updates. The Priests Fray Diego de Landa learned about the Maya culture before he and a different group of Catholic priests were sent by the Spanish monarchy. To convert the conquered regions around 13 years before the burning of the Maya idols and artifacts in Mani, he had a reputation for being the missionary who covered the greatest ground while exploring the Yucatan Peninsula's jungle to learn as much as he could about the Maya. It is even more puzzling how he ended up burning such important records given that he was able to master the fundamentals of the Mayan language and engaged in extensive interaction with the local indigenous population of Yucatan. As a result, the settlers began to trust the friar, who eventually allowed them to show him some sacred texts that contained what he perceived to be demonic doctrines. De Landa chose to halt them as he came to terms with the thought that there was a covert network of Maya apostates in Yucatan who sought to empower the forces of the devil 
before Catholicism. The missionary chose to destroy the codices and sacred artifacts because he thought that this secretive group of Maya indigenous people wanted to establish the religion of the devil throughout the peninsula. Inquisition The Spanish Inquisition reached its height in 1562, which facilitated Fray Diego de Landa's execution of the auto de fe, a figure of the Inquisition that required potential adherence to the devil's works to repent in public settings. Unknown numbers of Mayans were summoned to the auto de fe, where they were subjected to torture to confess their fantasism for gods far removed from the Christian faith. Some of the native people killed themselves after having their gods and identities set on fire. Around 5,000 different religious figurines were also destroyed on July 12, 1562, along with an unknown number of Mayan codices and books, 27 according to Landa. Tons of books worth of Mayan documents are thought to have been burned. All facets of the Mayan society were described in writing in those documents. Sylvanus G. Morley, a scholar, claims that Landa destroyed 14 temples, 27 codices, and 191 idols. It is known that just four authentic Mayan volumes or codices escaped 1562 ceremonies destruction. The so-called Maya codices are the works that have survived. Relationship of Things to Yucatan in 1566, Fray Diego de Landa Calderón wrote a book to describe the Mayan culture. His book was titled Relationship of Things to Yucatan. Years later, he repented of the atrocities he committed. After mastering the Mayan language, he authored a Christian philosophy and had it printed in Mexico City in 1575. Between 1572 to 1579, he served as the bishop of the Archdiocese of Yucatan. Despite his best efforts, the harm was never reversed because Charles Etienne Brasseur de Barbourg and other researchers attempted to translate the Mayan codices before they were destroyed due to Brasseur de Barbourg's inconsistent and inaccurate publications about Maya life. De Landa's work was officially disregarded by the Russian linguist Yuri Norozov in 1950 because he believed it was useless for understanding the language of this prehistoric society. The Mayan civilization survived the collapse of the classic Maya period. Even now, 7 million people in Mesoamerica still speak Mayan. Up to the Spanish conquest, northern cities and those in the highlands of Mexico and Guatemala persisted. Despite suffering a tremendous blow, the Maya civilization managed to survive. If you like this, subscribe to our channel and explore more history and mystery with us. Thank you for watching this video, and don't forget to let us know what you would like to see on History Flicks, and what you think about this video in the comments section. If you like this one, check out our others on History Flicks. And until then, goodbye.